I was very young retiring, uh, 31 or something. Um, but I was happy with, with what I achieved. You know, a lot of players would have snapped my hand off to, to, to have had my career, the clubs that I played for and everything else and the moments that I had. But more importantly, um, I then became really ill. I, um, I'd, uh, I'd come into contact with cancer, testicular did cancer. You, sorry, John, did you know beforehand? Did you suspect something? I mean, I, I read, is it true, you, you first established probably four years earlier that you had a lump in your testicles. Is that correct? And you, and you kind of didn't go and yeah, get it checked out? One, one day, Mark, I chatted with my wife and um, I said to her, have a look at this. And I showed her my, my scrotum and one of my testicles had like a, a big lump on my testicles. And she said, you, how long has that been there? And I was like, a couple of years. And she's like, oh my goodness. She said, you're going to have to go and get that looked at. So I told her I was going to go and see, uh, he was a, I can't think of his name now. I think it was David something, the, the, the doctor at West Brom. I was going to go and see him. And I was going to go and get it checked. At least he could have sent me or he could have referred me to a hospital or you know, made an appointment. And I never went. I never went to see him. And I went home, my wife said, how did it go? And I went, no, I went fine. She said, it's no problem. But I told a white lie. Okay. Um, and then in the meantime, the lump got bigger. It went from like a, a you know, like a grape size into a, you know, a, it was really like a baked bean size into a Maltese size, you know, size. And it was on the edge of my, one of my testicles. And it was clearly, and unbeknownst to my knowledge, it was a tumour. It was, a, it was a tumor that was cancerous and it was spreading. It was spreading around my body. And I became, um, I put a lot of weight on around my chin. Um, I, uh, I was falling asleep sort of at the traffic lights. Um, if I sit there and it was light and so I'd put the brake on, I'd be like that. And my wife couldn't understand why I needed so much sleep in one day. I was coming home, I was sleeping all the time. Um, and in the end, I, I was diagnosed with testicular that cancer that spread to my lungs and onto my brain. So I was uh, taken into hospital. I had tests and, and everything else. I had, um, you know, I took emergency brain operations, um, several sessions of chemotherapy. Um, it, it was a horrific time, you know, because I, I was in desperate trouble because I'd allowed it to spread. It was all over my body, the cancer, at one stage. And I had an operation there and at the back. Um, I had a shunt put in there, which is still there. And then I entered into a chemotherapy program, which through the grace of God, you know, I got stronger and I got stronger. And I managed to come through it uh, against all the odds, really, because at one stage it, it was looking very, very bleak, you know, as if I was going to, you know, I nearly passed away uh, at times. And the family, everybody was there, really worried. It, it, it was out in the press and everything that John Hartson is fighting for his life. You know, I went onto a, onto a life support machine. Um, and then I had a big program uh, to a day or two when I left hospital. I had to an intellectual chemotherapy program um, and just, just hope for the best and hope that, you know, luck and God was on my side and he'd give me another chance. And, through the grace of God, I managed to come through that. And that was, that was just over 10 years ago now. Um, so, you know, as I said, I came through that. I was very, very blessed. You know, we know lots of people don't come through it. And I don't know how I did it, really. I don't know how I got through it because it's very difficult to say, is it luck? Um, is it positivity? I know the chemotherapy, my body reacted really well to the chemo, um, the chemotherapy. I don't know if you know, but it's the chemo is meant to kill all the red cancer cells. Lance Armstrong's book, he's, he's on his hands and knees, nagging the, the nurses and the doctors, pleading for more chemo because he knows it's saving his life. But what it also does, it eats away at your nice white shiny yeah. cells that keep you alive. So what happens is then it eats away at your immune system. Those white cells, they're your immune system. They keep you alive. They go all around your body. They're beautiful, shiny white cells. But these horrible cancer cells, that's what the chemo attacks. But it attacks both because it doesn't stop for no one. The chemo 
you know, and that's when you get side effects and that's why you feel ever so down uh, with chemotherapy. It's, it's, it's a horrible thing to, to, to be involved in, but ultimately it's, it's killing the cancer, mm. but it's also killing them other white cells that keep you alive. You know, so my immune system was down. There was a period in hospital where I couldn't stop coughing and they actually thought I caught pneumonia on the ward. They actually thought it was the pneumonia that was going to kill me, not, not, to, not the cancer. Um, and they were putting towels up to my face. I could not stop coughing. And for whatever reason, I stopped. So that was a life changer for me, really. I don't know why I stopped, but you know. Um, and there was lots of other things and things happened while I was in hospital. And, um, you know, things that probably personal and, th you know, my kids who couldn't come into the, into the ward because of risk of infection. I only had to name three people that could come to my bedside, which wasn't very nice. Watching my kids outside the room, you know, it was, wasn't a very nice period of my life. But I managed to come through it. And um, I'm, I'm eternally grateful and appreciative of the fact that I was able to, uh, you know, still be around really to watch my children grow up. And it, it's totally changed me. It's totally changed me as a person. You know, it's, um, it's the simple things now. Like yesterday, I was up at a beach, just up near North Berwick, just walking along a beach with my kids and just enjoying the fresh air and sucking in the air off the beach, you know, that sea salt. And we all had a great sleep last night. We were up there for about an hour. Um, and it's just things like that, things that, you know, maybe I took for granted, you know, before, um, which you can never get them things back, you know.